morning everyone, I'm Silverwolf and I'm doing a little video for my friend Tom Grant on Twitter who is blind and who wanted to know the uh, visual differences between the Hatchimal and the Furby. Now he said I can choose any Furby to compare and I've chosen to do the 90s one for the simple reason that so many people have said well the Hatchimal is kind of a rip-off of the 90s Furby so I will be doing this descriptive comparison of these two. Uh, we do some shout outs first and they go to Twitch, Furby Voice 2004, Gelsey Noel, Furby Fan 2004's best friends Amy Green, Alison Will and Angie Westbank and Super Mario Logan. So in front of me right here I have Kevin the Hatchimal who is green and purple and my black and orange Furby Mimi. Um, the Hatchimal, uh, Tom did actually ask do they arrive um, pre-hatched or not well no you have to hatch them so when you unbox them they basically come in an egg and you pull the tab from the bottom of the egg which activates it and they will hatch the hatchy babies did improve on the hatching the hatchimals were quite slow and my hatchimal needed help to finish hatching from his egg because his beak it kind of pulls itself in and then pops forward to make holes in the egg and the, the hatchimal slowly rotates within the egg and my one's beak got stuck so he was still rotating but he wasn't pecking the egg so uh, he needed help to finish pecking the egg because obviously it wasn't working now my little Hatchimal he is what is known as a draggle which is kind of like a cross between a dragon and a penguin he's got little soft fabric spikes going down the back of his head and he's got a tail as well and that's got a couple of spikes on and he's also got a couple of dragony sort of like bat dragon wings uh, either side that move when he is walking about or you know talking or whatever he's got this little beak on the front now after he's hatched his beak doesn't do anything it doesn't move at all but you can still put your thumb on it and push it in and out because it's still got that mechanism in there he has LED eyes that light up when he is active and they also change colour and on the bottom he's got a pair of wheels and he can go forwards, backwards and he can also turn as well and he normally flaps his wings I think when he turns the bottom of him also shows um, how he was attached to the egg as well um, in comparison the Furby, now the 90s Furby is uh, about the same height but a little bit wider than the Hatchimal this is an adult 90s Furby that I'm comparing by the way uh, the 90s Furby has the fabric ears and this particular one has got a little tuft of fabric on its uh, fluffy fur fabric on its head and it's got a little round fluffy tail as well the shape is roughly the same on both of them the Furby has a more sort of like diagonally slanted back getting wider at the base and narrower at the head whereas a Hatchimal he has a round head and a slightly wider round body um, and he is roughly the same sort of um, length from the top of his head to the bottom of his body his body is slightly wider but it doesn't have that slant on the back that the Furby has uh, turning the Furby upside down he has of course his little fabric feet the Hatchimal doesn't have any feet at all and underneath the Furby has got this uh, sort of rocking mechanism so he can rock backwards and forwards and he's just woken up luckily he's going back to sleep okay Mimi's gone back to sleep now the Furby's eyes are not LEDs they have eyelids that open and close and of course the eyes these particular ones are brown and uh, eyelashes on the eyes as well and of course the Furby does have a working beak and tongue so that's how you feed it um, so how you touch them, the touch sensors Furby as we know has a tongue sensor belly sensor and a back sensor the Hatchimal has a belly sensor which is a button similar to the Furby it's got a head sensor as well and it is sensitive to light in a similar way to the Furby also the Hatchimal 
as similar to the Furby as well, has a tilt sensor. So if you tip him on his back, he knows about it. If you tip him forward, he makes eating sounds because that's how you feed him. Which is nice because you can put um, kind of fake food in front of him and tip him forward and pretend he's eating it. I always thought that was pretty good. You can even do it like in front of your dinner or something and pretend he's sharing a meal with you. Uh, the Hatchimal's little tail doesn't do anything, it's just fabric. In a similar way to the Furby's tail as well. Um, the, the Hatchimal, I believe it takes... Uh, I'm trying to see how many batteries it takes. It takes two AA batteries, whereas the Furby takes four AA batteries. So it's running on less power, but it does less things. Um, also, the Hatchimal does fall asleep when it gets a bit bored. Um, the Hatchimal also, interestingly, has a switch on the bottom that you can switch him on and off. So my one, obviously, I'm able to tilt him about. He's switched off right now. If he's asleep and you tilt him, he'll wake up like the Furby does. The Furby, of course, has no off switch. The 90s Furby, as we discovered just now, um, and woke up. So that's pretty much it for the uh, sort of descriptive comparison between these two. Also, the, the fur the Hatchimal's made of is very, very soft. It feels like velvet when you stroke him. So, And it's all sewn on the right way as well. It's always nice when plushies and things get their fur sewn on the right way. Because when I was a kid, more often than not, a plush would have its fur sewn on. So that instead of if you stroke it from the head along the back, the fur would be running backwards, so it would feel really weird. But I think it was when Beanie Babies came about, people started actually sewing the fabric the correct way, you know, in a similar way to the animal's fur always lays the right way. Um, the plush's fur would as well, which is a nice little attention to detail. The Furby's fur, just stroking his back. Yeah, on the back of the Furby, he's got two panels of fur with a seam up the middle. This panel here on the left is sewn the right way. The panel on the right is sewn the wrong way, so one side strokes upwards and the other side strokes downwards. Which is kind of sad really, but I notice the Furby's tummy fur is always sewn on the right way, so it always strokes downwards. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope this was helpful to you Tom, and that you now know a little bit more about how the Hatchimal and the Furby compare. Um, the Hatchimal doesn't have any infrared sensors of any kind. I did hear that two Hatchimals could communicate, but I don't actually think they can. Um, it was someone's review on Amazon, they said that their grandchildren's Hatchimals could talk to one another, but I don't think they can. I think they just kind of make noises and it looks like they're talking to one another. But I might be wrong on that one. Um, so there you go, that's the comparison. If you want to see more videos of Furbies and Hatchimals, you can click either box that comes up below. And that's all for this time. This is Silver Wolf signing off. Have a great week.